Hi everyone here and around the world. And I have in my lap tonight chocolate and fluffy and they had to have lion cuts because their fur had gotten them about as big as badgers. And when, when they got this shortcut, they started to act like kittens again, running around, they're playing games, they're uh, just absolutely adorable again. And it just shows when they get so heavy with hair, it kind of drags them down. And so even though it's winter time, it hasn't been like winter in Albuquerque, here they are, my dear, dear, beautiful, beautiful chocolate and fluffy. And I'm going to put them down to continue the program, but I wanted you to see them. That it, This is the uh, first time in the winter I have done like this, and I'm so glad because they really have been having a lot of fun. And great news, you guys. We have broken through 194,000 subscribers. Onward to 200,000 in this rapidly changing world. I've lived in Albuquerque since 2004, and December was always the month for the most snowfall. But so far, no snow on the ground where I live since the 2020 winter. The days have been full of sun and blue sky and warmer than usual, and maybe it's because the whole planet has been setting heat records. This past year of 2021 is the fifth hottest on record, and both the United States and Europe had the hottest summers ever. And the year 2021 was among the seven warmest on record, according to the European Union's Copernicus Climate Change Service. 2021 also broke the record in normally frozen Greenland when it rained for the first time known to humans on the Greenland ice sheet. Quote, in July, rain on the Greenland ice sheet lost enough ice in just two days to cover the entire state of Florida under four inches of water, close quote. These record-breaking warming events were first reported by the European Union's Copernicus Climate Change Service in the UK that began keeping temperature records officially in 1950, but also have other historic records that go back to the 1800s. Europe's 2021 summer was hottest ever. Western North America had unprecedented heat, drought, and wildfires. Lytton in British Columbia, Canada, broke all Canadian heat records when thermometers reached 121.3 degrees Fahrenheit or 49.6 Celsius on June 29, 2021. Climate scientists at the United Nations are now predicting that the Earth could warm by a, quote, catastrophic 2.7 degrees Celsius in this century in which great flooding, severe droughts, forest fires, food shortages, and terrifying hurricanes could become the new normal. Well, there was some good news this week. Last Saturday, the James Webb Space Telescope unfolded its last gold-plated hexagonal piece for its huge 21-foot wide mirror. That was the final step in the great telescope's unfolding itself for its historic mission to look more deeply into this universe, to look for other life on other planets, and to see back to the beginning of this cosmos. And other good news is that a massive asteroid the size of two Empire State Buildings that comes by Earth next Tuesday, January 18th, 2022. It will not be a planet killer like the new movie, Don't Look Up. But there are a lot of nervous people these days writing to Earth files that they are sensing something big coming to Earth that might be dangerous. One of those writers I had on this Earth Files YouTube channel about four months ago in late September of 2021. And that's when I talked with New York City 
graphic designer Adam Burns, who is also an experiencer of what is known historically as the, quote, UFO human abduction syndrome, close quote. But Adam would characterize his experiences with a variety of non-humans as valuable education by them in this revolutionary time when Earth's climate is so agitated it could become an existential threat, while at the same time humans could finally be introduced to the cosmic truth. This universe is teeming with consciousness and other life forms, some friendly to Earth life, others neutral, and a few hostile as government-controlled remote viewers reported in the 1990s. Adam Burns was featured in the 2021 release book entitled The Unknown Other and the Existential Proposition of Alien Contact by Lester Velez, co-founder of OPUS, the Organization for Paranormal Understanding and Support, and they support people who help in the human abduction. Adam was born on February 3rd, 1968, in the UK, 25 minutes north of London in the Hertfordshire. In his first year, his parents moved to Australia, then to New Zealand, and then back to Australia. Now, 53 years old, Adam has also lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where in 1999, he earned an associate's degree in literature and films, and four years later, in 2003, he graduated from Brooklyn College in New York with honors and another degree in literature, art, and film. He is now a graphic designer in Manhattan and is finishing a novel about non-human hybrids on Earth. On January 3rd, 2022, Adam Burns sent me a Happy New Year email with the news that he did another hypnosis regression with a skilled hypnotherapist at the end of December to recall more details from his most recent abduction. Adam said it was like a big wake-up call from the same beings that he has interacted with before. One is a manted being, and this is one of Adam's sketches of the manted a small white gray, a sketch by Adam, and a larger gray being, all three, all three beings Adam has interacted with several times in the past. He e emailed me a transcript of his December 27th, 2021 hypnosis session that included these words, quote, there are big changes coming. Things on earth are going to get worse before they get better. There are other beings that are trying to keep you humans down, that don't want love and light and higher consciousness. It's very complicated, close quote. I have also been receiving many emails and letters from Earth Files viewers who say that they are having vivid dreams about something big coming beyond COVID. And I want to share with you now a discussion that I had last weekend with Adam about his recent hypnosis session. On page five of the hypnosis session, this is you talking telepathically to the beings. There are beings that are here helping us, but there are other beings here that don't wish us good and the implication is, we can't tell apart which beings are trying to help us and others are insidiously trying to take planet Earth. Yes, exactly. I think the best thing we can do is to have this discussion about we need to be preparing for the best and the worst, that there are large groups of beings getting together to help us, but there are also many beings getting together to try and take this planet. And because we can't tell them apart at the moment, we need help. And we can only get that by discussing this more in the open and not treating it like it's some wacky subject. Right. We have to get this discussion into the mainstream. And they are saying to you on page seven of the hypnosis session, quote, there are big changes coming. Things are going to get worse before they get better. 
Why are we having to go through this period of time in which we have never officially been introduced as Homo sapiens sapien on this planet by the so-called leaders and power brokers to the huge fact that we're not alone in this universe? Those power brokers are active today, and they're still trying to keep us suppressed from the truth that we're not alone in this universe And yet this is all coming at the same moment you're being told in hypnosis that there are intelligent beings that want this planet and they don't want it with us on it. And there are beings who are saying, yes, we can fend them off, but we want you to do it. And there's a part of me that says this is unfair because Homo sapiens sapien has never been told the truth and educated over the last 45,000 years since Neanderthalensis. Yes, I totally agree. You're dead right. I don't share their ideology. I just try to understand it. They also said the change. It's a word that they've used many times with me, and I've also read it in other regression transcripts. It's something quite common. When people like me are talking with these beings and they talk about the change, it's a phrase like containers is another word they use for us. And I'm finding out that there's many kinds of greys. They all look alike to us, but I've seen three different kinds of greys and another kind that look very similar but had bluish skin. My understanding is that there are loads of different species of greys out there. So we've got so many that even look alike, let alone all the ones that may look different, that have all these various agendas and it's only when we actually can talk about this and not be afraid to talk about it that we can all start to figure it out and that will not happen if it's just a few select private rooms in government where they keep it all to themselves. And that's where they want it to stay which is why there is internecine warfare in the Pentagon those that don't want this to be broken open and others now that are trying slowly to break it open But this also goes to another section of your hypnosis on page eight, and that is where they are talking about the hybrids. And you say, are we all going to become hybrids? And they answer no. And you say, so humans won't be replaced by hybrids? They say, no, that's not what we want. You have to evolve and become better beings who know love and light and a higher consciousness. And you said, and these other beings don't want that. And they answer, that's right. Those others, they're trying to keep you down. It's very complicated. So I can assume that there's millions of abductees. There's many, many millions of hybrids. And so I find that very encouraging. What encourages you about what you've learned about hybridization, which scares most politicians and government and military and everybody who think just the process of hybridization is an invasion? Two things. One, they feel what they can't control. And two, their motivations are primal, like war, money, power, and that's the way they think. So Just suppose the hybridization program is exactly what the politicians fear it is, and poor schmucks like me are just being taken for a ride with all this love baloney, right? Let's say that that's what's really going on. Why on earth would they expend so much energy talking to me and manifesting to me in various ways and showing me things, taking me to Orion and all this stuff? Why would I even matter? It's a big thing that's coming to the earth. But the change is also a change within you, meaning all of us down here. What does it mean, a big change coming to the Earth? Well, we definitely have to evolve to a higher frequency, a higher consciousness. Is it because something physical is going to happen in this solar system, in this galaxy, something with a black hole or something astronomical? What is it? that they have at least told you enough that you suspect what is going to be behind this big change on the Earth? I don't know. They haven't been specific about that. But but one thing that is slightly in that direction that they've told me is all these other forces, these other beings that want the planet, wish us harm, and they've been meddling with us throughout our evolution, and things are building up more and more in recent decades. And I think that that is going to get to a point where 
they just do something so catastrophic to wipe us out that the problem, the big change, I think is going to come from these beings. It's not going to come from us with a nuclear holocaust because the beings that are here and even U.S. Navy clips of UFOs intercepting missile tests and deactivating missile silos, they know when we're going to hit that button and send a, a nuke up, then they can stop it. So I don't think we have a nuclear threat because they're here keeping an eye on us. But the environment, that's a ticking time bomb. The beings that are communicating with you telepathically and doing some of the abductions, do they have a vested interest in Homo sapiens sapien on planet Earth because they are the ones who genetically manipulated DNA in already evolving primates to create Homo sapien. I think that there's more than one group of beings that's meddled with our evolution. I think that life is actually common in the universe, but the spark of life is not. The spark of life needs a little help, and evolutionary branches need pruning. And I think that we've been helped throughout our evolution by beings that are much older than us that want to see us evolve. But there have been others that are more self-serving that have altered us and controlled us. For instance, why do we use only a small part of our brain? Why do we live such short lives? I think that we were altered. I think initially we were quite different. I think we were what we would call advanced in our abilities, telepathic. And I think that we've been pruned to be controlled. And that the same groups that did that then are controlling us now. And I think that they would rather just see us gone at this point. Is it fair to say that those who have been controlling so much of what happened with genetic evolution of humanoids on the earth, that they see us as a crop to harvest sperm and eggs from in order to create a huge variety of containers that then they can inhabit? As I understand it, messing with DNA and creating new species is a common thing. It's like customizing cars here in America. You know, It's not considered ethically wrong like we might think it's ethically wrong here. And so it's no accident that there's so many bipedal species and species with hands. Certain things work and they become popular on Earth. Look at all the different species that have hands and feet on Earth. And then it becomes a form that is in this universe that continues to repeat over and over and over again. Yeah, because it works. If you look at the greys, they have humanoid bodies. that They have arms, legs, hands, and feet. But their heads are so large, they couldn't come out of a womb that way. Some of them are made entirely in a lab. They float in tanks. Yeah, exactly. And some are organic. I think that they have evolved larger heads to do what they need to do. They're very, very advanced. Adam, have you ever asked one of the greys or any of the beings with you, what is a soul exactly? Yes, I asked them in this last session. I asked, what is your understanding of the soul? And they said, you know what we think it is. It is much the same. The soul travels, but your body only travels so far. And I asked, so you have souls? And they said, yes, we all have souls, as you would call it. And I said, so what would you call it? And I was told a light essence, a force, a power that is everywhere. You are that light and you become it and you belong to it and you travel through it and you have a relationship with it. And that is the light that I think of as the thought that dwells in the light is the infinite divine. Yes, exactly. That's a beautiful way of putting it. Because the thought is how you control things. That's how they control things. With us, we keep it very compartmentalized. We have the mental and the physical. They don't. And what they view as a life, a soul, a light essence, goes on through infinity. It goes all the way back and all the way forward. And they showed me this thread that's like a thread of gold light. And it's very bright, very, very thin. And along the way, there was these blips on it, like you would get a sound wave in a recording, like a diamond shape, the triangle above and below the line. It was like that, but the blip was like a blip of light, and there was bigger ones and smaller ones along this thread, and they said that there are pulses along the way, and what you focus on is the physical, the tiniest seed within that pulse of light, but it's not the whole picture, even of that pulse. And my understanding was that that thread is a soul or a life force 
a light essence that goes for infinity, but those blips of light are a lifetime in a body. And from what I understand it from other conversations with them, what they would call a container, what we would call a body or a physical life and lifetime is something they choose. They choose the next one. That's definitely something they've told me. And it's like putting on a shirt. For us, we have belief systems that say karma, you work your way up through becoming a better and better person. One of the beliefs here of reincarnation. But for them, it's literally like they decide, I'm going to end this life now because I want to go into that form over there and become that. And then they go do it. And they have complete control over it because they've mastered higher consciousness. And what do you think happens at the moment of death for humans on Earth? My understanding or my theory is that the human life then suddenly is aware of that vast light essence and goes back into that consciousness again. And I think that it's, it's a matter of choice at that point, whether to go into a state of higher learning and growing consciously or to just go back into another life form piece of energy that goes back to where all energy goes. It never goes anywhere. It's all here. When they showed me the thread, I was aware there were other threads, and then they all merged and became this blinding white light that was everywhere, warm, creamy white light. And I realized that the light was made of all those threads, and there was an impossible number of them, literally so many threads interconnected. That is light itself. That the thought that dwells in the light is the all of which the infinite number of consciousnesses in a variety of life forms is always cycling. And those cycles of life are what create all of those glowing threads through infinity. Yes, exactly. And I thought I would share with you one more piece from an alleged transcript that was made of a Camp David meeting between President Ronald Reagan only a couple of months after he had been elected with his CIA uh, director and people from the NSA and DIA. And leading the discussion with President Reagan was CIA Director William Casey. And this is um, known as based on information that when I talked and showed this transcript that came out several years ago to a trusted source that I know in Washington, he told me he knew that there was such a briefing for President Reagan at Camp David about UFOs and ET, ETs two months after his election and that guiding the discussion was a, quote, caretaker, Intel, and CIA Director William Casey. And in the presentation to Ronald Reagan, they say, quote, the United States of America has been visited by extraterrestrial visitors since at least 1947, we have proof of that, the caretaker. However, we also have some proof that Earth has been visited for many thousands of years by various races of extraterrestrial visitors. Mr. President, I'll just refer to those visitors as ETs. In July 1947, a remarkable event occurred in New Mexico during a storm, a thunderstorm, two ET spacecraft crashed. One crashed southwest of Corona, New Mexico, between Corona and Roswell, and one crashed near Dadel, New Mexico. The U.S. Army eventually found both sites and recovered all of the debris and one live alien that I will refer to as EBA-1. President Reagan, can we classify them, connect them with anything earthly? The caretaker, no, Mr. President, they don't have any similar characteristics of a human, with the exception they have eyes, ears, and a mouth, 
but their internal body organs are different. Their skin is entirely different from human. We could not classify any part of the aliens with humans. They had blood and skin, although considerably different than human skin. President Reagan, are they all friendly? Mr. President, that is a very difficult question to answer. There are many parameters <coughs> that we follow to evaluate the threat. However, we have little intelligence on four of the five ETs that we know about. And they go on about how they know a lot about the Ebens, which are greys, and that they may have collaboration with the greys. But Mr. President, we think one of the species is very hostile. And when they go on into the discussion about the hostility, they are talking about that they have known facts that in the 1950s that certain extraterrestrial biological entities that they were learning about were in fact taking people from Earth in craft to someplace else and returning them that is the human abduction syndrome, or also known as experiencers, or everything that you heard tonight and back in September from Adam about his experiences with beings that he considers to not be hostile to him, but trying to help him in a difficult time on the earth. And then CIA Director Casey asked the caretaker to give President Reagan the names of the known alien groups. This is 1981, Camp David. The caretaker, okay, Mr. President, the five species are called Ebens, Extraterrestrial Biological Entities. It's an acronym, and the Ebens are considered to be of the vast number of types of grays. The second, Archaloids. Eventually, they are explained as extremely large nosed, vertical pupiled eyes, cone shaped heads, and that that was the type that was there in a 1964 April landing down near Holloman Air Force Base or White Sands, in which we had an exchange of bodies and exchange of technology. The Archaloids very much resemble the Sumerians in their ropey headdresses. Quadloids were identified as being something in the praying mantis insect category and uh, some others that are not considered to be a, a problem or a threat. Heploloids, no explanation, no details, in Latin, hepla can relate to the number seven, but it's not clear what heploloids are. Others have said that the heploloids were the tall whites and the tall Nordics, not identified in this briefing. And the fifth, trontoloids. The trontoloids, quote unquote, in this briefing with Ronald Reagan are the dangerous ones. We call the hostile aliens simply that, HAV, meaning hostile alien visitors. MJ-12 placed that code on them back in the 1950s. And Ronald Reagan says, you mean to say that these HAVs have been visiting us and abducting people since the 1950s? That's just a facet that I'm sharing with you, it's a long transcript, that the government of the United States and other governments on this planet have known that they were dealing with species that were not from this planet going back to World War II, and that briefings like this were being held for President Reagan and probably for all other presidents between World War II. And now, as I have been told we now have Space Force out in 22 solar systems. And that as Adam and I discussed, 
that it is almost incredible, hard to accept something as unfair that we have nearly 8 billion Homo sapiens sapiens living on Earth, and we have never had an official announcement, education, explanation, even though they've had bodies and craft and have been back engineering and they have space forces out in 22 solar systems. Earth is still treated as a place that we are to persist in being, quote unquote, uh, the only intelligent life in the universe. I know it's, it's silly, but that's the state of affairs until something I hope this year that finally, finally, there will be some honest truth that would be reported to a planet that I think is facing danger from a lot of directions and that it is only fair that humanity finally be told the truth and the whole truth by the power brokers and so-called leaders. So I wanted to share this tonight and just put this small piece on there because it's huge. It could go on for hours that presidents have been briefed on extraterrestrial biological entities, that many people have had experiences like Adam Burns, and that he and others know that some of the beings seem to have a vested interest in helping humans and that they try to encourage a kind of philosophy about loving and caring and the light. I thought that Adam's animation that he did so that I could share it with you about the thread, all of the threads through infinity. It's sort of what I have said to you in the past, but never had anything that was such a beautiful illustration as what Adam did, of sensing that the souls are the real quantum energy of every conscious being, and that they number into infinity, as he showed, would be so great that if the soul is emanating light, that it would be a completely solid, creamy, warm light through to infinity. And I find this is all so exciting because it involves physics. It involves so much that if all of us were exposed to what governments and power brokers were learning, we might be able to change the timeline on Earth. We might be able to move it to much more positive, positive energies coming instead of negative. I really do feel that we can do that, that human souls and minds concentrating on something that is positive by a lot of people can affect the timelines. And let me know if what I've shared with you tonight, do you find it helpful? Do you find it comforting at a time when everything seems so agitated that it is very hard to get a fix on exactly what each day is going to feel like and bring? But that at least on Wednesday nights here at the Earth Files YouTube channel, that we can open up these subjects that have been so, so closed and hammered down for so long. And maybe, maybe in our humble exchanges of trying to understand more, maybe we can add some Pontalisma dots to shifting that timeline in the future to something that is positive and reinforcing that our souls are vital and that there may be an infinite number of other life forms in this universe and beyond. But that doesn't mean that we have to be afraid of it, that perhaps the best possible psychological change and shift that could happen in this agitated world 
is if we had the entire truth told to all humans at the same time. On that note, Ian, what have you got up your sleeve now? Good evening, Linda. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for the generous super chats. We've got quite a lot this evening. So thank here we you, are. Everybody. And here comes Linda. Fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney C. Mighty Mo 22. Joan 0111. Rat X 172. Mark Petrie. Whisper of Love. Cheryl Dixon. Manda Panda. Carl Balsamer. Doreen Garvey, Lily Boop, Marcio Correa, R&R, &R, Chan Sung, Green Nightingale D. Hop, Fabian Far Beyond, Goldie Olvido Barroa, Linda D. Lembo. Thank you. And to Ian for all of the great pronunciations and to all of you with your creativity of all your wonderful names and coming and doing the super chats. Um, everything helps to do these programs every Wednesday, and I am so grateful uh, that we are continuing to do them and that they keep growing. It's fantastic. Uh, we should all be thinking about what would be fun to do when we hit 200,000. Um, so uh, send in your, your ideas, and as we reach that number, we will figure out what we are going to do to celebrate. Um, and I also ask all of you, and, and through to Ian as well, who works so well in the messaging and, and the chat, I would like to know uh, from as many of you as possible what your uh, genuine reaction is to the work that Adam has done and is doing and the interview, and the, the I guess you'd say my point of view in the beginning of 2022, that opening up all the truth could help humanity. Governments and power brokers seem to think the truth will cause a problem, a huge problem. Maybe it's that they thought that all humans would panic, wouldn't be able to function. I just don't think that's true at all, but I would really like to know from you all what you what you think at what seems to me like an extremely uh, fragile but beginning to open up sense that we are beginning finally to move toward real truths about real intelligences, real technologies, that we have very advanced technology that no one knows about because it's been developed in collaboration with the tall whites and the tall Nordics and others, and that the disconnect between reality of what is really going on between Earth and, let's say, at least a um, hundred light years, is that we are already in space, but we're living on a planet where they're going to do theater to pretend like everything is new and everything is a discovery. Anything that would move us from such long centuries of deception to the truth, I think would be the right step. But I know that there are arguments otherwise. So I would really like to know what you all think. Okay, Ian, what have we got up for questions? First of all, I'd like to say a shout out here from, um, it's from Aidan McLaughlin. He oh, says yeah. he loves your show. His dad got him into watching the show and he never misses a week. And he wonders if this week it's the um, his father's birthday, Frank McLaughlin from Derry in Northern Ireland, oh. and it's his birthday tomorrow. So happy, happy birthday, birthday Aidan in uh, in Europe! My gosh, welcome! I'm so glad I get so many more letters now from people in all different countries, and it's wonderful to feel that the kind of unification that I wish we all had. So happy birthday! Keep coming to Earth Files YouTube channel. Thank you. Okay, and we've got a first question from um, Sexy Sadie who says, Linda, do you think the Earth hybrids know they are hybrids or do they discover through hypnosis? 
I've asked that very question many, many times over the last 42 years when I began meeting people in the abduction syndrome because I had produced a strange harvest on the animal mutilations, also another facet. And I remember that it was puzzling that a lot of people who said that they felt that they were either given knowledge or there was something about their body makeup, that they were a human, non-human hybrid. But I do not remember ever hearing any of the people who long ago in the 80s, especially thinking of that as a kind of transition decade when uh, things really began to open up, I think, in books and conferences and a lot of things. I don't remember anybody who thought that they might be a hybrid who, who said, I know for a fact. That seemed to come later in the 90s into the 2000s. I don't know how to explain that. I think we all know that the non-humans, when they want to, can have 100% control on human functioning. They can paralyze. They have temporal technology in which if they take you at 9.32 a.m. from your car and they keep you for two weeks on another planetary system, they can return you to 9.32 or 9.33 on that date. I don't comprehend it fully myself, but I know that we are dealing with manipulation of time in such a way that it would explain why so many humans that can remember when they saw the light or they saw the beings in their bedroom or, or, or something that they actually remember, but nothing in between. So that could explain that there could be hybrids, hybrids, whether they're raised in the tanks or in pregnancies, and then those people, that, that there is some process for choosing where they would go and that those that would come to Earth might have their entire memories stripped because the non-humans can do that. And they would end up from the beginning, they would not have any judgment one way or the other. They, they wouldn't even have knowledge about any of it until later on. It's usually in later teens or 20s uh, that most people outside of childhood, the buzzing sound in the closet, a glow of light in the closet, a shadow, a silhouette shadow, that's what children usually remember, or flying, children who remember flying around the neighborhood or their room, that I think is one of those signals that I listen for, that they might be children who ended up being taken, but there is not a gap in time because of the temporal technology that if we have it, if humanity has it in any way, um, I would be surprised because I would think that temporal technology would be dangerous even for the beings who may be skilled with it. But the idea that people or entities could arbitrarily interrupt with and change and fuse lines that seems dangerous. But look at how many people have been feeling like suddenly in 2022 that they've never felt time, the timeline so chopped up like confetti is the way one person put it. Like something has come in and just really done a number on wherever there was a timeline coming out of uh, 2019 to 2020 and then 2021. There's a lot of people who are sensitive who feel like something weird has really been uh, applied to the timeline and that wherever we're headed in 2022 and beyond, it may not even be clear to the temporal technology uh, entities. So that's how complicated this is now and why the hybrids are here and I agree with Adam. I think they're on the earth in great numbers. Uh, 
One estimate that I heard that the CIA had was that there might be 30 million hybrids on Earth now. And he, Adam's point of view is they are here to help. The government's point of view, I think, is they don't understand why there would be hybrids here unless it was a threat. So the pendulum is swinging between the threat issues and the possibly growth, humanity growing further and beca becoming maybe Homo sapiens sapien would feel more agape bound if they knew the whole truth of everything. Why are there many races? What was the real role of the Anunnaki thousands of years ago in genetic manipulation on this planet that set in motion many different types? Which one has responsibility for the chaos, the genetic chaos? Those are all questions that need to be answered, but I don't know anybody who has clear answers. There's a lot of hypotheses, but I'm not sure about clear answers. So um, let's, let's keep concentrating on truth, real truth, that brings positive energy to this planet because it is truth. Okay, Ian. A lot of people are resonating with the terminology that Adam used of containers. Yeah. And I think that's the phrase that you used way, way back in yes. the 90s, didn't you? Oh, all the way back to the 80s. Uh, by the time that I was working on an alien harvest in 1989, I had already heard uh, that word used as uh, the, the non-humans look at humans as containers. And then by uh, 10 years later, when I did Glimpses of Other Realities, Volume 2, of the two volumes, the two volumes together are uh, almost 750-some pages um, and there is that 106-page section in Glimpses of Other Realities, Volume 2, about the tube technology. And that Linda Porter, one of the six humans who interact with the tube technology and with a variety of different non-humans, they all came away with the idea that the non-humans have some vested interest in length of life in certain human bodies for reasons that are not really quite clear and that they would have the ability with technology to interact with what we will call the soul essence. And the first time I ever heard this and saw the illustrations by Linda Porter, I was profoundly troubled and upset because it was the opposite of what I considered that our, our very souls would be absolutely untouchable. That's what I, the way I perceived the soul-body container relationship. That the soul would be like the energy, like the, the gold thread that Adam draws. From life to life through an infinity that is hard to comprehend. So the idea that there could be other intelligences in this universe, on other planets, with technology that could con collect genetic material, create, it would grow into adult human bodies, and those human adult bodies could be used, one, to keep a life of a human going. That was the Linda Porter case. They told her, you had rheumatic fever as a child. Your heart is damaged. You will die too early. That's what they explained to her. And that there were, and they demonstrated on a man that they said had died in the, I think it was on the Great Lakes, uh, Wisconsin or someplace there. And they explained to her, demonstrating what they were going to do with her. 
that the man was in a tube. It was sustained with other bodies in also in tubes by a light at the top and the bottom. And there were, it was a different form and shape on the bottom of the tube versus the top. And they explained what what these two different emanating frequencies did to sustain these bodies. And that in her case, the gray being explained that they were going to transfer, of the praying manis called it, we are going to translate you in the light. And the praying manis seemed to be in charge over everything, but it was the gray a scientist, Linda Porter thought, who was interacting between her, showing her how uh, they had a man who died, but that it was very important that his soul remain in his that man's specific type of body. And they showed how they brought him to life uh, many years younger than he has died on a table. And they explain and show to her, she sees outside the earth and sees a map that they're taking the man that they have now uh, resurrected and they're going to put him in Australia and he will then live out a paired life between his soul and his body and he will and they and they say to Linda they uh, they know and allow the man will die in Wisconsin It'll be a funeral he will be buried but that his genetic identical twin will continue with the soul in that body in Australia. because And they say they will never cross paths. This man will never cross paths. How many of the um, doppelganger phenomena that has occurred on this planet, uh, Bud Hopkins and I used to talk about that. What does it mean that there are people who recognize themselves to a T on a ship or on a planet or something, and then they are told that there is something going on about keeping that particular body and that particular soul bound together. R Brad will get that. Can't imagine why anybody would call while I'm on. Uh, that the body and the soul would be kept together uh, in different places because of something that the non-humans knew about us. And that's why the big picture is all of these details of abductions imply always that the intelligences have a great deal of knowledge about the humanoids, Homo sapiens sapien on earth, and that government documents imply that the original Homo erectus genetic manipulation two million years ago was by non-humans with a vested interest in growing, evolving, harvesting from humanoid life forms on this planet, and that that's the true big story. There are many, many, many more facets, and the longer I have investigated, the more, quite honestly, truly, there may be insects who want to annihilate us on the surface of the earth and take the earth. That may be true. There may be beings that can mix and match timelines, can extract our consciousness and our soul for some uh, unfathomable reason, but keep us living in another body that is identical, that it will live longer, all of that may be true. But everything that I've experienced, everything that I feel at this point in time of being on the earth is that there is a divine field and even if this universe was made to test the strength of the souls versus something designed to be evil, something designed to fight, something that would explain the yin and yang nature of this always seeming in conflict universe, 
the white versus the black everywhere. I still, I feel it to my core that the biggest box is the divine field and that the souls are connected to that divine field. And that whatever we continue to evolve and learn about the relationship of our souls to human bodies, souls in gray bodies, praying mantis bodies, tall whites, tall Nordics, insects that are not friendly, that fear, repression, deceit, lies, are the wrong method to deal with it. And that's what keeps me going. And that's why I'm doing the Earth Files YouTube channel. We're on a planet that seems to me to be drowning now in challenges and fears. And that makes everybody vulnerable. If we could, with our own mind and heart and soul, concentrate on what kind of strength we get when we are told truths. That is the strength that we need. And we're not going to get it from living on a planet that is drowning, drowning in lies, political and otherwise. Okay, so dear hybrids, if there is somebody listening and they feel that they have a substantial uh, reason or memory or experience that why you're a hybrid, what it is that you feel your destiny is, I would like to hear that too. I think we all, it's, it's confusing. There's confusion because there have been centuries of lies. So there's tremendous confusion. All right, Ian. I just want to say, sorry, this moment, can we've just reached a thousand likes on the channel. Could you ask <laughs> everyone to hit the like button, Linda? We've got 3,800 3, oh. people watching at the moment. Oh, can you all hit a, a like button if you like what we're doing tonight? <laughs> Thank you, Linda. I and, think that helps a lot. And I so, love you guys. Yeah. I truly love you. And I mean it seriously because we don't, we don't live in the same space, the same area of the world, all of us. But what I mean is I love all of you because I get the sense of who you are and what you're worried about and what you love and what you're concerned about and what you have experienced through your letters uh, through your emails, through a variety of ways. And then I know how much I love you, dear audience, because you, I, Brad, Ian, all of us, we're people trying to understand what the real truth is about being a human being on planet Earth, in this solar system, in the 22nd century, on a planet that has been manipulated since at least the Anunnaki. We're bound in wanting to know all those truths beyond. I love you for doing that, for being there, for wanting to come to Earth Files. And it helps to keep growing in the YouTube universe. So if you haven't hit the subscribe button, Hit it now and maybe we'll go 195,000 this coming week. And the whole idea is the more we have an audience that is struggling with the same issues, the same experiences, the same joys, the same desire to understand what the truth is, maybe we're making a knock on that door of the divine field. So with that, Ian, is there one more, maybe shorter question I can answer? 
Well, I, 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 the questions are short. <laughs> yes, sure. They're very complex. I'm the, I'm the culprit. <laughs> I'm the one who comes. Linda, uh, it's, a, it's hard to figure out which aliens uh, we can trust. And uh, another one says, just my opinion, a lot of channeled disembodied beings, and certainly the many hybridized and AI even beings, likely do not have souls and may not be reliable sources about souls. That is a very good question. Because I remember in the 79 to 89, that decade when I was working largely on animal mutilations, I believe that the context was that whatever the beings were that were mutilating the animals, they were soulless. There was a lot, you know, like they could be evil and satanic. Today, in 2022, I have a completely different perspective based on more and more information that I'll, I'll try to sum it up in a short way because this is something we could talk about in another program in depth. I have been exposed to people who are in engineering, uh, medical science, and what would be aerospace technology in which that question has come up, why would extraterrestrial biological entities based on Earth, underneath the oceans, or not based on Earth, living under Mars or Ganymede or from another solar system, why would they concentrate on largely both domestic and wild animals in terms of taking essentially the same tissue over and over again, ear, eye, tongue, jaw flesh, genitals and rectal and or vaginal, that's, the, that's sort of the main MO. And then there are the hearts that are taken out, the bladders that are taken out, the kidneys that are taken out, livers that are taken. There's internal organs that are also sometimes taken out. And then that discovery through ne uh, necropsies uh, left open this big uh, issue of the technology that it wasn't not human because how would you get a heart out of the chest of a big cow with no surgery? So all of that high strangeness in the animals went from maybe it was satanic cults and everybody in law enforcement saying no that's just a cover up to uh, the last year or two this other information from these people who have more knowledge is that the greys specifically have a vested interest of some of their type in this planet because of their own genetic manipulation. And the way it's been explained to me is that there are certain, I'll just say, uh, chemical ingredients in earth life that help them survive. That's as basic as I can say it. If there is a vested interest in earth life that keeps other beings alive, the deceptions about where they come from, whether they're good, bad, or in between, whether they have souls or not souls, could have grown since World War II because the government of the United States, I know for a fact, had technology, craft, and bodies uh, earlier than 1947. And they had very skilled medical people who were doing those autopsies. I think that our government learned a tremendous amount early on and then decided that if the mutilations persisted on the planet, they would come up with the easiest deflection of all time. It's satanic cults. Even though I've sat in a room with sheriffs, deputies, detectives, one FBI guy, and it was about what satanic cults were actually doing in the state of Arizona. And I was asked to come to a meeting. Uh, they paid an airline 
ticket for me to come where all of these law enforcement people had a meeting about animal mutilations and satanic cults. And to boil down two or three hours, that it was so clear, I brought dozens and dozens of photographs and Polaroids and slides and video of the actual animal mutilations, which are bloodless and trackless. And they had films and videos and photos of this other world. And everything in the so-called satanic division, tremendous amounts of blood. All, all of it. And, and the, with the law enforcement with me looking at my photos, they said, there's no blood here. And that was the division for them in their minds that what they were dealing with had tremendous amounts of blood and therefore what they were probably dealing with in Arizona were satanic cults. But what animal mutilations were that they thought maybe it was the same perpetrator were so completely different. Catholic priest told me that as well, who dealt with satanic cults and said they deal with blood. Your photos, Linda, there's no blood. It's completely different. But the idea that we could be dealing with advanced intelligences that do not have souls goes to another whole area, I think. And that is, how exactly is this particular universe constructed? How are the universes constructed beyond this universe? Because I think many astrophysicists are beginning to say that we are in something that they would call a cosmos with multiple universes. And it may be that the complexity of why this particular universe was created to pit black versus white might explain why some beings would claim having a soul whether they did or not, because from everything that humans know, a positive, healthy human being has a soul that is connected to the divine field and that it recycles and recycles, as Roger Penrose said, through cycles and cycles of infinity. If there is some huge demarcation in all the universes between which life forms have quantum energy souls that recycle versus other beings that do not, I am, I'm at a loss, truly, because it's so far outside my feeling deeply about the divine field that it seems like that would be impossible, uh, an impossible choice. But I am open to learning as much as I possibly can because we can never be afraid of learning what the truth is. That's my motto, that's what I have lived by my whole life. So I share it with you, hope you share it back. And I love, love, love being able to be with you guys on Wednesdays and keep punching those likes and subscription buttons. And we will keep this growing. And I look forward to next week and even sitting here right now, I'm not sure what I'm going to share with you next week, but every single week brings something new that is worth sharing. I love you guys.
Turn on closed captions for YouTube videos by clicking the white CC button on the lower right. The default language for Linda's videos is English. If you would like to see the captions in another language, click on the white Settings button next to the CC button. Select Subtitle CC and then select Auto Translate. Select a language Bind them anywhere. They love and the captions the will now appear in that language. Sort of gone through and they will hold their heads. I never had a cat do that before. And they'll pull against the comb, helping me get out snarls. And I think it's the best they've ever been.